Harris is good to be back. The preacher fed me too much this afternoon. I'm just getting so, so uh, fat. Okie dokie, let's see here. Let's see where we, we left off this morning. Let's talk about the... Uh, about the name and number of your all of your chapters, like I do in my uh, in my first mention study Bible, and uh, I've used uh, I've used the Cambridge Wide Margin Bible for the last I would say I've been say 15 years. So the last 40 years, I've always used the same brand of Bible, and so you know you can you can. Think of a scripture, you know exactly where it's at on the page. Well, I'm trying to transition to my study Bible, and boy, it is tough. It is tough. I can, uh, so it'll have to, I'll have to read that 150 times before I can uh, figure out where I'm at. Uh, so anyway, I was talking about the name and the number of the chapters. Uh, <clears throat> look at Genesis chapter 5. Of course, we know 5 is the number of death. And I talked a little bit last night about uh, about the number five uh, being death, and it's only grace when there's something dying. Uh, said earlier, uh, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. It's the first time the word grace shows up is Genesis six eight, but it was the fifth time that Noah's name showed up. And it was grace to Noah, but it wasn't grace to the rest of the world because they would not heed. The word they were not, they had a chance to heed. They could have heeded. I mean, he preached in, some say 120 years while he was building the ark. Um, so you know they they could have had an opportunity just like we can have an opportunity. Uh, so five is the number of death. But um, chapter five of Genesis is the re- recordation of the, the it's the book of the generations of Adam. And then the first natural death in the Bible is in Genesis 5.5, 5 5 being the number of death. And in Genesis 5.5, it says, And all the days of Adam lived were 930 years, and he died. So first time the word died shows up in the Bible. It's in Genesis 5.5, and it's talking about the first natural death now that we know Abel was murdered so that that's not a natural death that's an unnatural death and uh, so the first natural death was here spoken of Adam and he was uh, said to be the first person to die after Abel uh, so when Abel went got to Abraham's bosom there was nobody down there Adam was the father was the first one to meet the son the father Adam was the first one to meet the son. I'm telling you, wow. Uh, God the Father scrambles down here to meet with us. And so uh, so it says, and the days of Adam were 930 years. Well, Adam was 930 years of age, and he's called the first Adam. Okay? Now the last Adam shows up in Matthew chapter 1. Look at Matthew chapter 1. The last Adam, of course, is the Lord Jesus. In uh, Matthew 1, 1, and uh, now Genesis 5, 5 said, or 5, 1 said, it's the generations, plural, of Adam. But in Matthew 1, 1, it says the book of the generation, singular, of Jesus Christ because he had no biological children if you're a child of God you're uh, uh, you're a, a spiritual seed of Christ and so it says the book of generation of Jesus Christ the son of David the son of Abraham now so the first Adam died at 930 years of age the last Adam showed up in Matthew chapter 1 which just happens to be I know it's just an accident the 930th chapter of the Bible. 
first Adam went out at 930 years of age. The last Adam showed up in the 930th chapter of the Bible in Matthew 1. That's the reason I name and number all of my chapters because you never know what kind of nugget you're going to find. Now, the name associated with the book, with the Matthew chapter 1, the name of the book in chronological uh, repeating order, you're not going to believe this. It's the book of Joshua. Joshua is the same name as Jesus. Joshua is the Hebrew word. Jesus is the English version of the Greek word. But it's the same word. It means Jehovah saves. Joshua is, the, the book of Joshua is the first book named after a man, and it just happens to be the sixth book of the Bible, six being the number of man. So you have the, the association of Matthew 1 with the book of Joshua. And it's the 930th chapter of the Bible. Uh, and first Adam left out at 930 years of age. But look at the Matthew 1.1. 1, 1, it says, the book of the generation of Jesus Christ. The first time the word Jesus shows up in your Bible, he's the seventh word in the verse. Seven is the number of completion and perfection. The seventh word of Matthew 1 is the word Jesus and uh, that he might have all preeminence. Now the last time that the word Jesus shows up, uh, look at Revelation 22, 21. That's the last time the word Jesus shows up in the Bible. It's the last time God shows up in the Bible. Revelation 22, 21. It says, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen which just happens to be the seventh word from the end of the verse. The first time he shows up, he's the seventh word in the verse. The last time he shows up, he's the seventh word from the end of the verse. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the first and the last. He's the beginning. He's the end. Uh, that this, this entire word of God, God, uh, shows up in Genesis 1. The last time God shows up is in Revelation 22, 21. The Alpha and the Omega, the beginning, the end, the first and the last. And you're not going to believe what it, Revelation 22, what the the book associated with Revelation 22. Now, if you had my study Bible, you'd know. But when you start out in the, the book of Genesis, you have a tree of life. You have a, the river of water of life. You have God showing up and fellowship and daily with flesh and blood of human beings before the fall. So you have perfect human beings in a garden, perfect surroundings with the tree of life, with the water of life. And then when you get to Revelation chapter 22, look at verse 1. It says, He showed me a pure river of water of life clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it and on either side of the river, there was a tree of life. So what have you done? You've gone from Genesis all the way to Revelation 22, but you're right back in Genesis. The book is infinite. You remember what I showed you about God? No matter which way you go, you can never get, rid of, get away from God. And numbers, you can never get rid of numbers. Well, the book is the same way. It's infinite. It starts out in Genesis, goes to Revelation, and you're right back at Genesis. You cannot get out of this book. This book is consistent. It's infinite. It never, ever ends. This book is like God. It's like God. And so, he, so, so what... So that the name associated with the book, with the Revelation 22, is the name Genesis. So if you name a number, all of your chapters, when you get through naming all your chapters, you'll be at Revelation 22, and the name of that chapter is Genesis. I didn't make that up. That's God's book. Man could not have done that. Man could not have done it. The book is supernatural. The 
King James, if you've got the King James Bible, you've got the right book. I mean, it's, it's unlike it. it. There's nothing else like it in the world. So that's the reason why I name and number all of my chapters. So you get the association here, the first Adam, the last Adam, 930, and uh, Matthew 1 and, and Joshua are, are uh, associated by chronologically repeating those chapters. Um, now, all right, so I was talking about death. All right, now look at, look at Acts chapter 5. Acts is the fifth book of the New Testament. So we're going to have, you can expect to see some uh, fireworks in the fifth book of the New Testament in chapter 5, in verse 5. We have the first recorded death after the resurrection of the Lord Jesus in the Bible. It's in Acts 5, 5, and it says this. It says... And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. That means he died. And great fear upon all them that uh, heard these things. So the fifth book of the New Testament, the fifth chapter, the fifth verse, you have the death of the first man, recorded death of the first man after the resurrection. And then five verses later in verse 10, which is two times five, his wife falls down dead. In a ten. Two times five. Then she fell down straightway at his feet and yielded up the ghost. A lot of folks die. Hey, if God judged uh, our church today like he did the early church to get them over track, we'd have dead people from here to slam to the highway. You wouldn't be able to walk. I mean, you wouldn't even be able to walk and be so many dead people. But God's gracious. He's merciful. And so uh, so the name of Jesus is the seventh word in the in the first verse of Matthew, and the last seventh word from the end of the last chapter of the Bible. I mean, you just can't make that stuff up. Uh, uh, let me see here. Uh, there's a phrase in the Bible, and look at Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8. There's a phrase in the Bible that appears just three times. And remember this morning we were talking about triplets and the Godhead and three and all that stuff. And so this kind of goes along with it, along with the, uh, with the Bible itself. Uh, Deuteronomy 8, in verse number 4, uh, you'll recognize this, this uh, phrase. It says, um, I'm sorry, 8-3, eight, 8-3. Three, eight, three. It says, Moses talking to the children of Israel in the desert, just before he was fixing to re-give the law. See, what happened is, when the children of Israel come out of Egypt, they wandered around in the desert for 40 years, and all the old folks died out. So Deuteronomy is Moses re-giving the law to the ones that were wandering around in the desert with him. Uh, and so he's re-giving the law. So in verse 3 he says, and he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know what that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord uh, thy God doth man live. Now, so that, uh, that phrase appears three times in the Bible. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And we know that bread, manna, is a type of the Word of God. It's a type of the Scripture. And so Moses is telling these folks, man should not live by the manna that fell down from heaven, uh, but by every word of God. And that's repeated again. Look at Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Now the context of Matthew chapter 4, the Lord has been uh, in the desert 40 days like the children of Israel were in the desert 40 years. So there's a correlation there. And uh, so the Lord's been uh, fasting for 40 days, and so the devil comes and tempts him. In chapter 4, Matthew chapter 4, start at verse 1, because it has a lot of first mentioned words here, uh, that Jesus, then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness. So we have 
the same, same scenario, the wilderness, 40 days, the wilderness, 40 years. Uh, uh, to be tempted of the devil. That's the first time the word devil shows up in the Bible. <clears throat> As the word devil. It's the first time it shows up. And uh, there just happens to be 66 letters in that verse. 66, as in six by six, as in the word of God. And verse two says, when he fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. And with the tempter, that's the first time the word tempter shows up, it's another word for the devil, came to him, he said, now I want you to look at the first thing that the devil says to Jesus on this, on Mount, I believe it was Mount Sinai that they were at, because Mount Sinai is where the law was given to start with. And God uh, has patterns, and he repeats those patterns over and over and over. And for us to learn, the first word out of the devil's mouth in Matthew is if. That's his job, is to get you to doubt God, to doubt his word. The first thing he said to Eve, remember, was, Yea, hath God said? Did he really say that? Did he really mean what he said? Yea, hath God said? So the first thing, uh, first time the word if shows up in the New Testament is coming right out of the mouth of the devil. If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he, Jesus, answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So that's the same thing that Moses said in, in uh, Deuteronomy 8.3. It was that man shall not live by bread alone. Well, Jesus is quoting what Moses said. Now look in Luke chapter 4. It's the same context, but it's coming from Luke this time. The same context of Jesus being in the wilderness uh, verse number one, and uh, Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned from Jordan, was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being 40 days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing, and when they were ended, he afterward had hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Now, folks, that phrase appears three times, just three times in the Bible. Very, uh, very uh, important. Three, of course, the number of the Godhead, number of Trinity, number of life. So when, when God says something one time, that's plenty. But if he says it twice, watch out. And if he says it more than twice, then Katie bar the door because it's fixed to get hot. Okay. And uh, But look at this. The address... I, I, Study the addresses in the Bible, okay? The first time it shows up in Deuteronomy 8.3. The next time, Matthew 4.4. 4, and the next time, Luke 4.4. 4. You ready for some math? Okay. What's 3 plus 4? Plus 4. What's 8 plus 4? Plus 4. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of the 16.11. What's 8 plus 3? And 4 times 4. Whether you're coming or going, the Word of God, the bread of God, is the 1611. That's just a coincidence that God dropped in there in the addresses just to re-emphasize that the 1611 is the right book. If you're willing to study it and to get something from God out of it, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by the 1611. I, I thought that was amazing myself. Okay, now the uh, <clears throat> the name uh, Jesus, of course, is superior, and it's way up, and uh, uh, there's nothing greater than the name of Jesus except his word. And the name Jesus appears 980 times in the Bible. Now, if you do, a, if you have a, uh, I use Pure Bible, uh, let's see, King James Pure Bible Search. It's a free download 
uh, and I think the pastor uses sword searcher. But, of course, the King James Pure Bible Search is better than the Sword Searcher. I don't know because I don't use Sword Searcher. But it's the most premier uh, search engine I've ever used. So when you type in Jesus, it'll actually show 983 mentions. But three of those mentions is not the Lord Jesus Christ. It's, there's three other names of mentions of the word Jesus in the New Testament. Uh, one was in Acts when... Uh, Stephen was preaching, and he said, Jesus led them out. Well, he, he said, he was saying Joshua, but of course, it's the same word as Jesus. So you take that one out, and then there was Jesus called Justice. You take him out, and then there's another one. I can't put my finger on it right now. So when you take out the three anti-mentions, you're, you're down to 980 times. Now, why not 960 times? Why not? Here's why. Because 980 is 70 times 7 plus 70 times 7. 7 is the number of completion. That's the reason why it only appears 980 times in the Bible. Because God does things by 7s. I'm going to give you some 7s in a minute. It'll blow your mind. Now in Matthew 1... The first time the word Jesus shows up, as I told you, is the seventh word in the verse. And when you get to the word Jesus, it's, you are exactly 77% through the Bible. Man could not have done that. Man would not have done it. 77% through the Bible. And you'd find that by getting the number of words divided by uh, the number of that particular word, which you can do th with the, uh, with the uh, pure Bible search, divide it out, and it's 77% through the Bible. Only God could do something like that. Um, the phrase Jesus Christ together, those two words together, appears 196 times in the Bible, uh, which is 14 times 14. And uh, you know 14 is, uh, or 28 times 7, you can do 28 times 7. So you have all the multiples of 7 there. The phrase son of man, which if you read, read the scripture, any uh, son of man is also 196 times in the Bible which is 28 times 7. Uh, the, the phrase, verily I say unto you, or verily I say unto thee, is spoken only by the Lord himself, and, and uh, it appears 77 times in the Bible. Verily I say unto you, or verily I say unto thee. Why? Because God uses sevens to perfect. And when God sevens something, he perfects it. Uh, the, the, the word capital A, amen, capital A, amen, appears 77 times in the Bible. Now, let me, let me show you something about the Lord's name. Look at Revelation, the Lord's name. In chapter 3, now the Lord's given instruction to John. And he's going to give us give us one of his names that a lot of people uh, just 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 pass right over. Um, and he's talking to I see is it two chapter two. Uh, okay, uh, chapter three. I'm sorry, chapter three. The Lord is talking to John, and he's talking about, in verse 14, he's talking to the, uh, the Laodicean church. He says, unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, which I believe is where we're living at today, write, these things saith the Amen. That's his name, the Amen. So there's no reason why 
the capital A, amen, couldn't show, wouldn't show up 77 times in the Bible because uh, that's the number of perfection and completion, and that's his name. And when, when, an, when an author gets through with uh, uh, writing a book or something, he'll sign his name, okay? He'll, he'll sign Kevin Mann or whatever. Well, look at Revelation chapter 22. See who signs his, his letter, chapter 22. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And then he signs his name, amen. Now, verse 20 just happens to have 16 words. Verse 21 has 11 words and then his signature. 16, 11, amen. Now, do you, th you think man could have done that? Man had nothing to do with this book other than he was the physical instrument. The amen, 1611. I mean, you just can't get any wilder than that. Now, look at Luke chapter 3. Now, this is the genealogy, the earthly gene genealogy of the Lord. In Luke chapter 3, now there's two genealogies of the Lord Jesus in the, in the Bible. Matthew contains one genealogy through the kings, not through, not through a physical lineage like Luke 3, but through the kings. He traces the kings all the way back, and he goes all the way back to Abraham, but he goes through the kings. But in Luke's go gospel, he traces the genealogy back through all the way back to Adam, okay, through, through the human instrumentality of Mother Mary, his mother Mary. The Lord Jesus was virgin born. He was, he was God's offspring. He was God's seed. And man had nothing to do with that. A woman has no seed. The man has the seed. But, but Genesis 3.15, God said uh, about the being the seed of the woman, which everybody knows that a woman doesn't have any seed. So he's talking about the virgin birth, the God-inspired uh, virgin birth. So in Mar uh, Luke chapter 3, we have uh, the genealogy, and it begins in verse number, look at verse number 22, and I'm going to show you some things about this. And the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. And a voice came out from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved Son in whom I will please. Now that appears seven times in the Bible, in the New Testament, where a voice calls out of heaven, This is my beloved Son. Just seven times. Not twelve or eighteen, but seven. Why seven? Because God sevened it. God perfected it. God completed it. When God seven something, it's, it's complete. So thou art my beloved son, and the, and the, and the and I am well pleased. And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being as supposed was the son of Joseph, which was the son of Heli. Now, <clears throat> this is the, uh, Joseph was the stepfather. And, uh, and the Lord's going to take us through his genealogy, uh, of which, is, which is Mary's line, actually. And he's going to take us all the way back to God. Look at verse number 38, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. So from Jesus to God is 77 generations. Just by accident. 77 generations from Jesus to God and from God back to Jesus. 77. Now look at verse number uh, uh, 23 again. After you pass the name Joseph, <clears throat> and he starts naming these people, every sixth word is the name of a man. And we know six is the number of man. He says, which was the son of Heli, which was the son of Mathath, which was the son of Levi. Every sixth word after the word Joseph 
is a name of a man. And every verse contains five names. Five is the number of death. Six is the number of man. Every sixth word is the name of a man. That's, the, that's how the Lord does things. He sets up patterns. And, of course, every one of these uh, men died, of course. But uh, we, so we have 77 generations from the Lord Jesus all the way back to God. Now, so the, the phrase, in Christ, 77 times in the Bible. That's the most important phrase that you can find in the Bible. You are either in Adam or in Christ. If you're, if you're here this morning, you're in Adam or this afternoon. If you've been, that's your natural birth. If you've been born again, you're in Christ. That's the most important phrase in the Bible. Find out who you are in Christ. And that phrase just happens to appear 77 times in the Bible. Uh, I said this morning that the phrase Word of God appears 49 times, uh, which is 7 times 7. Uh, the word Jehovah appears 7 times in the Bible, and it is 7 letters. The word Godhead that we spoke about this morning is seven letters. The phrase the Lord is seven letters. The phrase Lord God is seven letters. And the phrase eternal is seven letters. Uh, the word rock, seven times in the Bible. And Deuteronomy 32 says that the, that capital R, rock, is the Lord Jesus. Uh, rock, seven times in the Bible. The phrase, thus saith the Lord. If you read your Bible in it, you see that. Thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Lord. It appears uh, uh, 413 times in the Bible, which is 59 times 7. And every one of these I'm going to give you is a multiple of 7. Fairly I say, 77 times. Uh, the, I gave you this morning the, the word, 400 and, uh, uh, the word uh, 469 times in the Bible, which is 67 times 7. The phrase gospel of God, seven times. The phrase my beloved son, as I just mentioned a minute ago, seven times in the Bible. The word forgive, it's a pretty important word for a Christian. 56 times in the Bible, which is 8 times 7. The word forgiveness, 42 times in the Bible, which is seven, 6 times 7. The word forgiven, 7 times in the Bible. The word reconciled, 7 times in the Bible. The word confess, 28 times in the Bible, which is 4 times 7. The word confessed, past tense, 7 times in the Bible. The word favor, as uh, you have found favor in the Lord, appears 70 times in the Bible, which is 10 times 7. The word consecrate, 14 times in the Bible, 2 times 7. The word consecrated, 14 times, 2 times 7. Now, this isn't a multiple of seven, but it does appear seven in a multiple of seven verses. It's the word blood. I love this. The word sin appears 447 times in the Bible. The word blood appears 447 times in the Bible, showing you that there's enough blood to cover every sin. Amen. The blood is sufficient. Okay, then we have uh, the word um, rested 21 times in the Bible. The word cease, as in cease from your sin, 70 times. The word perfectly, seven times. The phrase, the end of the world, seven times. Uh, the word peculiar, you're a peculiar people. 
And boy, we are getting more peculiar as the days roll on. Uh, seven times in the Bible. The word workmanship, seven times. The word workman and workman, 28 times, which is four times seven. Uh, the word church, pretty important word, 77 times in the Bible. Seven of those times is in the book of Revelation by itself. And it's the seventh church mentioned, of course, is the church of Laodicea, which is the last church before the rapture of the church, which is where we're living at right now. So the word church, 77 times in the Bible. The word witness and witnesses, etc., 119 times in the Bible, which is 17 times 7. That's what's so uh, peculiar about Psalm 119. It's 17 times 7 with 176 verses, which is 16 times 11. God works in numbers. God numbers stuff. All right, now, so uh, uh, witness, witnesses, uh, multiples of 7. The word assembly, 49 times in the Bible, which is 7 times 7. The word bride, the bride of Christ, 14 times, which is 2 times 7. The word fishers, I'll make you fishers of men, 7 times in the Bible. The word comforter, and now I love this. The word comforter is, uh, that's, that's the name of the Holy Ghost. You remember the Lord Jesus named him? Uh, uh, he called him the comforter. He says, if I go not away, the comforter will not come, which is nine letters, and it appears seven times in the Bible. Perfect comfort by the Holy Ghost. And, of course, the Holy Ghost, that's nine letters. Um, comforter seven times. The word wonderful, 21 times in the Bible. The word counselor, 14 times in the Bible. The phrase, the mighty God, seven times in the Bible. And we... And this rings a bell with Isaiah 9, 6. It says, unto us a son, a child is born. That's his physical. Unto us a son is given. That's his deity. The government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called capital W Wonderful. That's the only time capital W Wonderful shows up in the Bible. Is talking about the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. His name shall be called Capital W, Wonderful. Capital C, Counselor. The Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. The capital P, Prince of capital P, Peace. You can't get around this book, folks. Can't get around it. Comforter, uh, Counselor, 14 times. The Mighty God, seven times. Um, ability, seven times. Abstain or abstinence, seven times. The word accused, 14 times, 2 times 7. The word adjure, which means uh, I, I command you to swear to me, like put your hand on this Bible, swear that you're going to tell the truth. Uh, 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 Caiaphas uh, said to Jesus, I, I adjure thee, means I make you swear that what you're saying is true. So adjure or adjured seven times in the Bible. Uh, the, the word agree, seven times in the Bible. Uh, the word amazed, is 21 times in the Bible, which is three times seven. The word amen, 77 times. The word anointing, 28 times, which is four times seven. The word apostle and all of its derivatives appears in 77 verses in the Bible in 49 chapters. So 77 verses in 49 7 times 7 chapters. Now, <clears throat> Peter of course was the chief apostle until Paul came along, you know. So Peter was always sticking his foot in his mouth and he was the chief guy. The name Peter appears 153 times in the Bible and along with the 153 fishes that he pulled out of the ocean. How about that? Um, I've got more. The word, uh, all the forms of the word baptize, like baptized, baptizing, baptism, all the baptized words appears in 91 verses in the Bible, which is 
7 times 13. But the word baptized, as in uh, uh, baptized into Christ, appears just 77 times in the Bible. 77. Uh, the word uh, believe in all of its tenses appears 322 times in the Bible, which is 14, 2 times 7, times 23. So it's a multiple of 7. Believe, believing, believest, all those believe words, which is very important to the believer. Uh, so it's 7 plus 7 times 23 times. Um, in 287 verses, which is 7 times 41, now the words belong and all of its tenses, belong, belonging, belongest, belonged, belongeth, appear seven times in the New Testament in seven verses in seven different chapters, 777. Seven, seven. Uh, the word beloved, uh, John was called the beloved and uh, appears 63 times in the New Testament, which is seven times nine. Uh, the, uh, the word book appears 196 times in the Bible, which is 28 times 7. The word birth and all of its tenses appears 28 times in the Bible, which is 4 times 7. Now the word the phrase bottomless pit is 13 letters, only shows up in the book of Revelation, and it appears 7 times in the Bible. Bottomless pit. The word breath appears 42 times in the Bible, 6 times 7. The word uh, charity, 28 times, 4 times 7. The word consecrate, 14 times. The word consecrated, 14 times, which are 2 times 7. The word cross, that's a pretty important word to believers, appears 28 times in the Bible, which is 4 times 7. The word disciple in all of his tenses, Discipline, disciple, 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 all those. Appears 273 times in the Bible, which is 39 times 7. The word epistle and all of its derivatives appears 21 times in the Bible, which is 3 times 7. The word espoused, 7 times. The word faith, pretty important to us, is in 336 verses, which is 48 times 7. The word fellow and fellow and all of his derivatives like fellowship, fellow servant, fellow laborer, fellow prisoner, all the fellows appears um, uh, 84 times in the Bible, which is 12 times seven. I mean, and, and it just it just goes on. I mean, it just there's just no stopping it. I mean, seven is just all over the place in the Bible. Uh, <clears throat> I said earlier that Jehovah appears seven times in the Bible in seven letters. The word Godhead is seven letters. The Lord is seven letters. Lord God, seven letters. Eternal is seven letters. Now I'm going to show you something about the phrase, my name. It's, it's a very, very unique phrase, my name. Okay? There's two, uh, two places I want us to look at. The first mention of that uh, is in Genesis chapter 32. My name. Now the context of Genesis chapter 32 is when Isaac was wrestling with the angel of the Lord. And uh, he was struggling with him, and he wrestled all night. And um, he's, he, uh, he's, he's fighting with the Lord. And uh, in verse number 26, and he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he, Isaac, said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. I mean, he was Jacob at this time. I mean, Jacob, not, not Isaac, Jacob. Let me go. Uh, verse number uh, 27, and he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he, the angel of the Lord, said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. 
And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? That's the first time those words appear together. My name. And it's the angel of the Lord speaking those words. Now look all the way over to the book of Revelation, chapter 3, where we were at a minute ago. And this is the last time that this phrase is mentioned. In Revelation uh, 3, verse 8. 3, verse 8. I find it. And uh, <clears throat> 3 verse 8, he's talking to uh, John about the church of Philadelphia, which is uh, the best church that there, there was in the list. Uh, the church of Philadelphia was in the time that we got our King James Bible. Uh, in that time frame, 1500 uh, to 1900, the church of Philadelphia. And 1611 is when we got the word of God. Now look what he says. Verse 7, it says, To the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth, no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. And that's what we got in the King James Bible, is that open door. No man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength. As compared to the other churches, they had no strength but at least Philadelphia had a little strength. They produced the word of God. Amen. Thou hast a little strength and hast kept my word and hast not denied my name. <clears throat> so that's the last time that that phrase, my name shows up in the Bible and is spoken by the angel of the Lord, which is the same one that's spoken in Genesis 32. <clears throat> now I know you're not going to believe this, but Genesis 32, uh, 29, in Revelation 3, verse 8, <coughs> he's talking about my name, my name. What's 3 plus 2? Plus 2, plus 9, 16. What's three plus eight? Eleven. My name. Sixteen, eleven. Folks, you can't get around this Bible. You can't get over it. You can't get around it. It's infinite. It starts and it just never quits. This is a supernatural book. Supernatural book. My name. Sixteen, eleven. I mean, I don't know what you're going to do with that. <coughs> But that's, that's pretty wild. And I showed you about the, the middle uh, two verses this morning of the Bible, about Psalm 103, 1 and 2. Okay. Um, okay, it, this, is, this blows my mind. Look at... Uh, First Chronicles, that's where you skip reading after the beginning of the year. You know, you start off gung-ho in Genesis 1-1, and then by the time you get to Chronicles, you you're, get to these names and you just quit. I've done it. Um, First Chronicles <clears throat> chapter 13, no, First Chronicles 21, I'm sorry. First Chronicles 21. First Chronicles 21. <clears throat> now, here's the first time the word Satan shows up in the Bible. You're in the 13th book of the Bible, First Chronicles. So you have a 13 there, which is always bad. Verse 1 says, And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. Now, there's a, a thing called gematria, gematria, where 
a letter represents a number. All right? So uh, the Hebrew uh, numbering system are actually words. Aleph is one, Beth is two, Gamal. I mean, that's what they use. Instead of writing, uh, uh, writing a one, they write Aleph. It's a word, Aleph. Or, and Psalm 119 is an alphabetic psalm <coughs> with uh, 22 sections of eight each. And so you can take, uh, there's a, uh, a thing on that I use whenever I'm uh, looking at uh, different things about numbering, about gematria. There's a, a little thing on the internet that you can pull up and type in a word and it'll tell you the numerical value of that. Like uh, like a like it in a, in a English a would equal one, and z would equal twenty six. Because you see what I mean. All right, so that's ordinal. That means a is one, b is two, c is three, d is four. Right on through. So if you type in a word, it'll tell you the numerical value of that. Well, Hebrew does the same thing. The the word Satan here is S T N in the in the Hebrew. We we put the A's in there uh, so that we can understand what the word says. S T N to us would say nothing. Stun. But so we put Satan in there and I mean the two A's and so and, and it's kinda like Santa. Yeah. All right, so the STN equals 359 in, uh, the, in Gematria, in Gematria, 359. Now, you're in the 13th chapter, 13th book of the Bible, and the, the first mention of the word Satan is 359 Gematria. And uh, First Chronicles 21 just happens to be by accident the 359th chapter of the Bible. Now, I don't want to blow your mind, but what is the 359th day of the year on our calendar? How about December 25th? How about Christmas Day? What, what they? Satan, 359, 359. Yeah, I'm not saying kick your Santa Claus out or nothing like that. I'm not saying knock down your Christmas tree and don't ever put it up. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that the the letters are the same, just rearranged. And they both have a connection with the 359. Okay. I thought that was uh, pretty interesting right there. 359th day of the year. Okay. Now, you'll have to get uh, Pure Bible Search to find this, but it's, it's very interesting to know that look at Jeremiah chapter 32. Jeremiah 32. Jeremiah 32. <clears throat> and this is the reason why I name and number all of my chapters, and I'm not your little, little fuzzy thing. Quit running my stuff. Okay, Ju uh, do, uh, Jeremiah 32 just happens to be the 777th chapter of the Bible. That's that's pretty pretty amazing itself. Find the 777th chapter. And you're not going to believe this, but the 777th word of the 777th chapter is in verse 25. It says, And thou hast said unto me, O Lord God. The word Lord is the 777th word of the 777th chapter. Lord. L-O-R-D. Now the first mention of the, of the word Lord and the only mention of the word Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, 
is found in Matthew 22, 44. Look at that. Matthew 22, 44. The only mention of the capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D in the New Testament is in Matthew 22 and verse 44. Verse 44 says, the Lord, that's the, that's the only time the L, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, talking about Jehovah God, talking about the sacred name of God, Jehovah in the Old Testament. The Lord said unto my Lord, sit on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. Talking about the Lord. Which just happens to be the 777th word of Matthew 22. 777 word of Matthew chapter 22. So, so the 777th chapter of the Bible, Jeremiah, the 777th word is Lord. You go to Matthew chapter 22, the only time that word shows up in the New Testament, and it just happens by accident to be the 777th word in Matthew 22. Folks, God has this thing interlined and intertwined. This is a living book. This thing has veins and corpuscles running all the way through it. No matter where you nick your flesh, I don't care where you cut yourself, you're going to bleed. Immediately start bleeding. Why? Because your blood is omnipresent in your body at all times. If you have a, a, a place on your body where the blood does not flow, then it's dying or dead. So you, you nick yourself shaving, you're going to start bleeding immediately. When you open this book, you're going to start, it's going to start bleeding. It'll bleed all over you. The blood goes from Genesis to Revelation. It's omnipresent. The blood is omnipresent in this book, just like the blood in your body is omnipresent. You can't get around it. Okay, that's it. I'll have to come back. I'll have to come back. I mean, I've got books and, and all that stuff out there, and all of that stuff's documented. And I can, you could can just stand here and teach for hour upon hour upon hour because this book is inexhaustible. And you get to, you get to digging around, you get to finger, uh, figuring around in this book, and man, the Lord will show you all kind of stuff. Study your Bible. Listen, the King James Bible is the only Bible that, commands the believer to study. Study to show yourself approved. All the perversions have taken that verse and they perverted it every time. But God told us to study to show ourselves approved unto God. A workman is not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now get this. It's not dividing error from truth. It's dividing the truth in this book. This book was written for me, but all of it was not written to me. There's things in this Bible that we don't do today that they did back in the Old Testament. We don't bring a lamb down here and cut his throat. That's called dispensationalism. I'm a dispensationalist. I believe that God spoke different ways to different people at different times. And this book has to, has to accommodate all of the nations and all of the people during their time that God spoke to them. So read your Bible, study your Bible, write a little dividing the word of truth, what goes to me, what is for me doctrinally. I'm going to give you this. Every book of the New Testament, from it's Romans through Philemon, that the first word in the first verse, in the first chapter, says Paul, Every book that starts with that word is written directly to you, Amen. specifically to you, the church age. If it does not say Paul, then that book is not written directly to you. It's written for you, 
You can get benefit. I mean, we've been getting benefit all day out of the Word of God from every, everywhere. So it's beneficial to us spiritually, but it's not doctrinally to us unless it has the word Paul. Now, I know you're not going to believe this, okay? You don't have to. And I'm not setting a date for the rapture or nothing like that. I don't set dates. Uh, this could be wrong. Okay, I could be all wet on this. But if you count all the verses from Romans 1, 1 to Philemon 25, that's the last verse of Philemon, you're going to come up with 2,033 verses. And immediately after the 2,033 verse, what shows up? The Hebrew shows up. And God starts dealing with the Hebrews once again. Now, I'm not setting a date, but if our doctrinal material is Romans through Philemon, and there's 2,033 verses, and then immediately afterward, the Hebrews show up again, mm, maybe something to it. Maybe something to it. Maybe the rapture of the church. Whenever the Lord starts dealing with the Jews again, now here's the church age, here's, here's the cross, Here's the church age. The rapture takes place, takes us out of here. Immediately we go into a seven-year tribulation, which is for the Hebrews. It's the time of Jacob's trouble, not the church's trouble. Amen. 2033, and up shows the Hebrews. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but it sure would be good. That sure would be nice. So we've only got a few years. Regardless, I mean, it can happen today and then this play out, uh, you know, a different way, and that's, that's fine. I've got another theory. I'll take two minutes to show you. It's probably, it's probably all wet also. It's probably all wet. But <clears throat> from, uh, from Joseph to Moses is 430 years. After 430 years, God sends a deliverer by the name of Moses to deliver the children of Israel out of bondage. From Malachi, God is silent. And, and by the way, God is silent here. He doesn't talk to the Jews between Joseph and, and uh, Moses for 430 years. From Malachi uh, to uh, John the Baptist, is 430 years of silence. They call it the silent years. 430 years of, of God didn't talk to anybody. And then John the Baptist stepped down and he said, Behold the Lamb of God. And he says, Repent for the kingdom of heaven. What if that 430 pattern continues? From 1611, 430 years would be 2,000. Uh, 41, minus seven years for the tribulation, 2034. There's patterns in this Bible for a reason. 2034, 2033, and then up shows the Hebrews again. I'm not saying that's true. I'm just saying get your house in order. Start living for God. Start reading this Bible, start studying the Bible, start doing all the things that you know you ought to do. He that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him it is sin. Is it good to come to church? Well, if you don't come to church, you're not doing good and you're sinning. Is it good to give money to the to the work of God? Yeah. If you're not giving something, then you're not right with God. I mean the widow gave all she had too much. That is less than a penny. You can give too much, can't you? Can you give a penny? Can you give something to the work of God? Sure you can. And if you don't do it, then uh, to let, you know, that is sin to you. But uh, anyway, I'm through. I'm just, I'm rambling now. I'm rambling. I'm meddling and rambling. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm punch drunk now. Uh, but listen, thank you for letting me come be with you. I want to, I'll come back. I want to come back. And, uh, Thank you, preacher, for letting me come.